Alright, so who who loves magical girls? Oh. Yeah, my favorite is Car Captor Sakura. <laughs> so um, this is a poem um, called In Which I Become Car Captor Maria. I want to be strong like Sakura, banish my demons into cards, turn my fears into friends I twirl with. Sakura wears pink, and sometimes her skirts are really short, but no one seems to call her shameful or asks her to wear something longer. I write my new name, card captor Maria. My sister says it doesn't match. Sakura is Japanese, and my first name is too common to be magical. I pretend the voices in my head are premonitions. One day, a lady in shadows will give me powers as I jump across a 300-story skyscraper to greet her. I get lost in these visions, almost forget my name is synonymous with laughter, that in my own fourth grade classroom, no one wants to sit next to the girl who uses a handkerchief instead of Kleenex. During recess, I search for loose beads on the playground. A playground aide asks what I am doing. I tell her loose beads from broken bracelets are actually sparkles of magic, and as card captor, it is my duty to gather them. She tells me to play with the other children. I have exhausted the other children. <laughs> None of them know what a card captor is, to the point where they made fun of my sketches and pointed out again that Maria doesn't flow well. I ask my mother why she named me Maria. She says it is customary for daughters in the Philippines to have their first names ascribed to the Virgin Mary. But we are not in the Philippines, and I don't even know what a virgin is. The word is not in my kid's scholastic dictionary. Card captor is not there either, which means it doesn't exist. The teacher calls my parents, tells them I spend too much time daydreaming. One girl laughed at my self-portrait of stars, frills, and a magic wand like an ostrich. I throw away my sketches. Cardcaptor Sakura disappears from Kids WB. I ignore the voices telling me I am special, that one day I will find a magic book and a friend, that my name will belong to something greater than what I've been given. Uh, how much time do I have left? <laughs> half. Oh, none? Oh. Half. half. Oh, okay. All right, so I will read one more piece. Uh, this one from this collection. This one's called North Luzon Expressway. The girl is a baggage of ash, a quart-sized Ziploc bag of dead flower petals. A donkey barks in the captain's seat. His teeth are made of leaves from Manila Acapulco trade palm. A bone finger pushes a button, and we clatter into a rain cloud above Mount Santa Rita. That's where the Americans watched us, my uncle said. The forest green melts into guerrilla warfare black as the aircraft's wing tongue becomes numb with stop. I want to go home, but how do you pick up ash? The girl sticks the dead flower stems in her ears. My uncle falls asleep to dreams of panopticon clouds. I pour lampanog into snake holes, hoping one will crush my bones like Istak's father in Boon, except we are not rebels. We are tourists on a trip through fog. I don't understand why we don't think of trees as bodies. The ca donkey captain tour guide meows grinding dead petal trail mix with his palm teeth from the girl mourning the rotten flowers in her ears. He says he has seen it all. All the people who walk through this jungle, white, brown, yellow, pink, and red, hoping for some reptile's throat to swallow and cough them up into dusty pellets. It's more fun in the Philippines, he says, when you're just a half animal, half corpse, waiting to be masticated. Woo!